Today you're going to learn the art of connecting an RJ45 end to a Cat5e or Cat6 cable. I'll give you a quick rundown of the difference between Cat5, Cat5e, and Cat6, show you the color arrangement for those eight microscopic wires, and show you how as a DIYer you can go from zero to hero networking your house on the cheap. First, the difference between Cat5, Cat5e, and Cat6 cable. Need a table? Thought so. Cat5, also known as the 5 Kitty and Kitty High 5, was developed in the early 90s and has a maximum data rate of 100 megs and a bandwidth of 100 megahertz. And it does allow a little bit of signal interference called crosstalk. Cat5e was developed in the early 2000s. The E stands for enhanced and it certainly is. Data rates jump to 1 gig, 100 megahertz or more of bandwidth, and it has way less signal interference. Cat6 was developed just a year after Cat5e and improved the max data rate to 10 gigs and a bandwidth of 250 megahertz or more. Given this, future-proofing my home means I need to use Cat5e or Cat6 cable. I'm using mostly Cat5e because I've already got a roll of it and it's ready to go. This is the RJ45 connector, which I've always just called an Ethernet plug. If you're like me, connecting one of these to a networking cable sounds like a daunting task, but I was able to figure it out with ManCycle Senior's assistance. So I'm gonna break it down for you step by step. First things first, grab your Cat5e cable. First thing you need to do is remove about two inches of that outer protective cable jacket. Don't forget that these are fragile wires we're using, so take care not to cut too deeply. My crimper tool is about 20 years old, but it works and has two blades on it, one for cutting entirely through the cable and one just for the outer jacket. Just make sure to use a gentle touch. I've got a modern crimper tool linked in the description below, along with the rest of the tools I'm using in case you need it. I like to remove about two inches of jacket so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Now, take a look at these colorful wires. The Cat5e cable has four twisted pairs of wires, blue, orange, green, and brown. Each pair consists of a solid color wire and a striped one. If there's a string in there as well, you go ahead and remove it at this point. Now, there's two primary arrangements for connecting these eight wires, 568A and 568B. Here in the US, 568B is the most common residential use, so I'm gonna show you that one. If you're in Europe, hello, governor, you may wanna use 568A. Cheerio, it's all sixes and seven. Bob's your uncle. Whichever route you go, the arrangement for these wires is essential to successful networking. Here's a schematic of the 568B arrangement that I'll be using. Now untwist the wires to about an eighth of an inch from where the jacket starts. Then fan out the wires into the order that they're gonna be added to the RJ45. Orange striped, orange, green striped, blue, blue striped, green, brown striped, brown. For each wire, I suggest arranging them in one flat plane right next to each other. Hold them tightly between the thumb and forefinger of your non-dominant hand. I'm left-handed, so I'm holding these with my right hand. I removed two inches of jacket so that I'd have plenty of wire to hold on to. Now that I have them in order, I use the cutting tool to evenly cut them at about half an inch. Before we go on, I should disclose that I am a science teacher by trade and not in the IT business. I'm not even really sure how internet works. Having said that, feel free to drop a comment with any questions or suggestions you may have, and I'll try to answer them. Let's talk about where these wires are going. Check out this RJ45 connector. Take a close look with the clip facing away from you and you'll see some tiny channels where each wire will find its home. Match the colors to the 568B order we discussed. Holding them in one plane in your non-dominant hand, move the RJ45 into position and carefully push the wires into their dedicated channel. Once you've got all the wires snug in their dedicated slots, it's time to cinch everything down. I'm using a crimping tool for this, which allows me to control the strength and position of the crimp that secures the wires. I'm just gonna squeeze this thing like an overly firm and overbearing handshake, like you're insecure and trying to assert total dominance. This ensures the wires are locked in place and make sure your connection is at optimal strength. When I'm all done, I check the cables to make sure they're functioning properly. Get one plugged into the router, one plugged into the computer, and let's try out the internet. Yes! It was a little easier than I expected, and I learned something new. Super cool. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up. That really does help. And after seeing it, if you feel like I've earned your subscription, just click that ManCycle logo there. If you'd like to see this Makerspace build from the beginning, I've got a playlist you can check out right there. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.